This is a video, this is this is an instructional video on how not to do your E6 kit. So get ready, because we're not gonna teach you anything. <laughs> we are going to be mixing and developing E6 color slide film, Kodak Ektachrome, and we're gonna be using the Bellini E6 kit. Now this is not the condensed kit, this isn't the three bath kit, this is the full I think it's seven steps with the stabilizer kit. Um, so there's a lot of different chemicals that we have to mix. We have to be very precise with our temperature and we have to make sure that there's no cross contamination. So a separate bottle for everything. And when we mix them up, we're gonna use distilled water, okay? Because we're gonna be reusing this chemistry. The E6 chemistry isn't one shot. Uh, I think the Bellini instructions say it's good for 12 rolls. And Jared and I are gonna have seven. Yeah, we're gonna do seven rolls today, ideally. Um, and so I, I'm really excited, but this is, uh, this is definitely a new frontier. And ideally, when it's all done, we will have film that's not blank. We'll have photo positive we'll have film. Photo positive film. Which is weird to say. Yes. <laughs> and, I'm so excited. Oh. oh, are you still going? Yeah, you're. I'm so excited to be using this beautiful Pentax 6 7. I've never shot 6x7. Six I've shot 6x6 six six and 645. Uh, never 6 7. Hopefully, I don't drop this thing. Please, God, don't drop that. It'd probably be fine. Yeah, it's a tank. Yeah, yeah. It's a brick. Wonderful. Awesome. Can't wait. Ready. It's the Bellini E6 kit. Those chemicals. Wow. Is that enough? Is that enough? Uh, I don't know. I'm used to black and white. Mm. So. Alright. So here is the. Alright, here's how we develop. Here's how we mix. Easy enough. Water. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all in Italian, too. Of course. Water and then the concentrate, so it's easy, and it makes one liter. Beautiful. And it's enough to process, on average, 12 rolls of 36 exposure. Yeah. So, yep. So that's that's 48 sheets of four by five, and 12 rolls of 120, six rolls of 220, and eight, eight by 10 sheets. Eight by 10 oh, sheets. God, we're not there. We're not there yet. <laughs> have this for when we mix the chemicals. What are we gonna go do first though, Josh? I think we're gonna go play some golf. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What we see here, we have our instructions for selenium toning. We have our time temperature chart. We have our specific volume chart. Here's our HC 110, 1 to 31. We have our stop bath. We have our HypoClear, we have our fixers, and we have our C41 color chemistry. So I think we got it all. We have all formats covered here. We're ready to go. Shutter, the feel of it, 
uh, 10 frames is interesting. But I'm so excited to see how the negatives actually look. I don't think I've ever even seen a six by seven negative. Um, and I had my spot meter and I really tried to make sure that I, I put the green grass on five, but I really tried to make sure that I didn't blow any of the highlights. Um, and I think I got some pretty cool shots. Normally I don't like taking pictures on the golf course, but there's something about ectochrome, like knowing that it's color positive. I could really, it really helped me visualize it. First, we're gonna get us some hot chicken. Uh, get ready for this, this work we're about to do, but we're about to mix the E6 chemistry. And once we get it mixed correctly, there's only, Hopefully. there's only, what, eight solutions that can go wrong or something in Italian. Uh, and so, if we can, if we can do that, then we're gonna get the thing developed. We're gonna develop two roles. I'm gonna do one role, and Jared's gonna do one role. So if we screw it up, we'll be equally disappointed. Or we'll know who screwed one up. Right, right, right. I can't wait. I can't wait. We got our distilled water. Everything's gonna be really good. Ready to go. Like Josh just said, we're getting ready to start developing E6, which. It's going to be the first time either of us have ever done it. There's a lot of instructions, a lot of things that can go wrong, so fingers crossed. Uh, I haven't shot that much color positive film. Um, I've only got, I think, two or three rolls here that I've shot, um, and the rest has been some uh, the Ektachrome 100 that Josh has went through, which is awesome. Um, I, again, when I met Josh, like, a few months ago, Josh was only a black and white photographer and basically swore off all color film entirely so knowing that we're here right now about to develop some uh some uh some e6 is crazy it's crazy but we're excited chemicals out of their little places and putting them into these one liter bottles to make measuring as precise as we possibly can as we put the water in them. Okay so now we've got all of our chemicals separated out with their water that they're supposed to have. We're dropping them into a soaking bath right now with the sous vide on. It's gonna be at 101? 103? 100.4. 100.4? Yeah. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna take, there's a little too much water in here, so I'm gonna... Take a little bit out? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna pour a little out. So now we've got the sous vide set. We're ready to go. It's gonna keep this water heating. One of the biggest things with E6 is keeping your chemicals preheated. 100.4 degrees. So we've got these nice little liter bottles right here that we've pre-mixed everything with. We're gonna let everything go in there. So we're getting ready to get started yeah, developing. Film is loaded. Everything is at temperature. It's supposed to be at 100.4. I have it at 101.5. Okay. Uh, just to make up for, you know, it's gonna start to lose temperature a little bit, so I put it a degree warmer. The first step is a preheating for three minutes without water. And there's a lot of confusion about that online, but it literally means put it, put the tank in the water, so submerge or almost submerge the tank in the water, but there's no, it's not like black and white, there's no pre rinse this is dry right now, but it says put the tank in the water. So we are going to put the tank in the water. For three minutes. For three minutes. Now right. with this, I feel like you might have to hold it I in there. Have, I, that I, way I no water seeps it, yeah. in, you yeah. know. 
Yeah, I have to hold it down. So, I guess so we are at a very pivotal moment. A pivotal moment. You're right. You're, 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 I, I, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't argue with you. I shouldn't. Okay. A pivotal right. moment. Pivotal moment. Okay. Six minutes thirty seconds. Six minutes thirty seconds for the first developer. You're gonna do con constant agitation for the first 15 seconds, and then for five seconds every 30 seconds. So right when the timer hits. Yeah. Okay. Here we'll start. Okay. There it comes. Gorgeous. Beautiful. And now we're here, first 30 seconds. Now what we're doing here is we're not using the twisting stick, Josh calls it the swizzle stick. We're actually going to just be hand agitating instead. A lot of, a lot of different opinions online about which one's better, which one's worse. But here we are. Okay. And then five seconds every 30 seconds? Yes, five seconds every 30. And now we're putting it back in the preheated as well. Yeah, so we can keep it. Keep it at the temperature at, that we need it to be going at. at. Yeah, yeah. That's Which good. with color film, the temperature is going to end up being very, very important. Yes. It's not like black and white. Yes. All right, coming up on our first 30 seconds here. And we're going to do five seconds. Yep, five seconds of agitation right. and then right back into the water. On our final agitation. So after the agitation, we do have a wash. We're going to be putting the chemicals back into the liter bottles that we had assigned earlier because we're going to be developing more than the two rolls that we have. This kit calls that it can do 12 rolls at a time. It really does pour right out. A lot. It's, this, these bottles are perfect for it. The bottles are perfect. If you're trying to do this at home, if you're watching this video, if you're watching this video and you're trying to do this at home, definitely would suggest the liter bottles because if you're trying to pour them back into these smaller milliliter bottles, you're gonna have a terrible time unless you just do it at full all 12. So now we're going into the water wash here. Now the water wash is for two minutes so after you do after you put your water in keeping it at that same temperature of 38 celsius we're going to go ahead and put it back as well into the sous vide and keep it at that temperature for the two minutes so let's go ahead let's set the two minutes josh you ready yeah all right we got it set in the two minutes there and what does it say for agitation no agitation whatsoever with the wash and now we let it sit look at that color yeah, it really changed it. That's interesting. So now we're doing step number two, the reversal here. And it's 15 seconds. It is constant agitation for the first 15 seconds, and this is a six minute ordeal. So Constant once, agitation for the first 15 seconds, and then what? Just let it sit, it says. Okay. I've got you at six minutes. Tell now. Me. No? Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yep. Okay. okay. You're good to go. So, 15 seconds agitation. Yes, sir. You just rolled over to the zero right there. Perfect. So, continuous mix for the first 15 seconds only. And then we just let it sit? Let it sit for six minutes. Okay. Putting it back into that water, keeping the temperature stable and the same throughout the entire process. How are you feeling right now about this, Josh? It's it's really just processing like anything else, you know. I mean, with it's this, it's like the same steps as C forty one. It's just this, they call it different things, and there's more there's more of it. But the basic thing of keeping the tank in there and keeping everything at temperature is the same. So it's good. It's 
very good. Black and white's still a little bit better developing, black, in my opinion. Yeah, black and white's still a little bit easier. So we've still got a handful yeah. more steps to go. We're at the right. reversal right now. So from the reversal, we're going to go right into the... Right into the color developing. The color developing. And then straight from that into the pre-bleach, the bleach, and then the okay. fixer. Okay, so now we're on step three with the color developer. It's going to be constant okay. agitation for the first 15 seconds, and then five seconds for every 30. What? No, it just it, it was it was being agitated. Okay. All right. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. that was my fault. Yeah. Sorry. No, 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 no. It, it's no. That's good. Okay, so we did that, and then we'll do 15. Okay. So we'll do the 15 second. Six minutes. So we're keeping these in warm water. Same temperature as this. Perhaps a little bit lower because it doesn't have the sous vide in it, but that's okay because. These are the first couple of chemicals, so what we're doing, if you don't have a big enough bucket to keep these chemicals all the same temperature while also putting your container back into it, getting some temperature water like this right here, keeping it at a little bit higher of a temperature, letting it drop as you go through the process. After you use one of the chemicals, putting it into this, taking it out of there to give yourself a little bit of extra space inside your bucket. And that water's not pink, it's just the reflection. Yeah, that water's definitely not pink, it is, it is the reflection of number one and two. Both of them came out a little pink at the beginning. We just finished the color developer, which is step three. Now we're going on to step four, which is the pre-bleach for two minutes, constant agitation for the first 15 seconds. We've done that. And then it's just 15 seconds. Just 15 seconds All right. only. All right. We've got this sitting in the bath right now with the sous vide still at the perfect temperature for us. And like I said before, we're cycling out the ones that we've already used because they don't need to be the correct temperature a thousand percent right now. When we stop after we're done with this tank with two rolls in it, then we will start putting the ones that we're going to use next back in here, getting them up to the proper temp that, it, that is like the exact temp. So it's coming along. So now we're on step five, which is the bleach. So it is six minutes. Uh, agitation for the first 15 seconds and then five seconds for every 30. We're knocking these steps out right here. We've got the fixer coming up next and then we have three washes and then goes into the very last step which is the stabilizer. Look at how much of the blicks of the, the, the fixer mm -hmm. is, uh, what is this? This is the bleach. This is the bleach, yeah. Look at how much of the bleach is leaking. It's the same thing with uh, with the C41 stuff, it just it uh, the blicks or sorry the, the bleach always leaks and it's a known thing. And so what I'm doing is I'm actually burping the tank a little bit, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean by burping. Okay, so what's happening is is that gas is building up, and it's something with the the bleach. And so what I'm doing is. I'm just releasing this, releasing the cap. That's all you need. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then it's it's not going to leak as much. Nice. And it's it's important with this. You know, we don't want to be losing chemicals before because before you know it, we only started with a thousand, and so that's the minimum you need for two rolls of 120. So before you know it, you're at 900. And, and then, then you're not covering up yeah, the entire yeah, tank. Yeah. Because you exactly. were kind of careless with the bleach. Yeah, so. Burping it definitely seems like the way yeah, to go there. Yeah, and I, I don't know if it's called burping it, but I'm just, I'm lifting up the lid just a bit, and there it goes, yeah. And that's releasing that pressure. <laughs> okay, so the bleach has now been taken out. We are now on to step six, which is the fixer for four minutes. Constant agitation for the first 15 and then five for every 30. So just kind of like you're doing with the every other step, except for this time, it's going to be four minutes instead of that six. The, but like Josh said, with the bleach, you have to be careful because, I mean, it will get everywhere and it's, it's a pain. So definitely do what Josh is doing, especially on this step. Wear the gloves. I, I'm always a big like, I don't need gloves. Who needs gloves? But when you're working with something like bleach, definitely go ahead and Absolutely. put the gloves on. It's, it's not a bad idea. Absolutely. Now we've moved on to the three steps right here. The wash, two minutes agitating for 15 seconds, and then five for every 30. So now we're just going to wait, and we'll be back once we start putting in the stabilizer. And Josh have come to a conclusion. The stabilizer might just be photo float. So we're going to do what it says for the 30 seconds with agitation for 15 seconds at the beginning, 
And then we're gonna wait and dump it out. And we might have images. What's the over under on us having images in there, Josh? I would say there's a 95% chance, more, 99% chance we have images. Good I, images? I, <laughs> but I, I think images. Beautiful. I'm excited to see them. When they're out, we'll show you. Yeah. And they're not going to look like correct. Right. Because it's something like, uh, like they need to dry. Yeah. And then when they dry, they're, they're going to be good. Just to be able to see the color positive yeah. a little yeah, bit yeah, through it yeah, and yeah. be able to see kind okay. of like what the compositions were at least. Right. Right, I can't believe we're doing this. I can't believe he said to me a couple of weeks ago, Let, let's get into slide film, Josh. I thought, what are you talking about? <laughs> and here we are. This was the same thing that happened when I said, Josh, let's get into color film. And then Josh said, no, I only shoot black and white. Yeah, yeah, more and black. now yeah, look at look, it. It's photo flow. It is, it's just it literally photo is flow. photo flow. That's all it is right there. That's it. I see images. All right. On at least one roll. Very blue. How blank is my roll? Oh, there's, <gasps> whoa! <laughs> I shot it last time we golfed, Josh. Whoa, what the fuck? No way. <laughs> Those look insane. Unbelievable. <laughs> so this is a big moment right here. Mine looks good. This is Josh's first ever six by seven roll. They look great. Oh my God, Josh. Oh my God. Guys, the kit works. I mean, follow, follow the directions to a T. The kit works. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. What's up guys? Just like every time that I record a video, I gotta start it with, haven't recorded a video in a while. The video you just watched was me and my friend Josh um, developing and shooting some E6. He used my Pentax 6.7 and then we used the Bellini six step kit to develop all of it. Um, what you're gonna be seeing on your screen here in a few minutes, I'm just gonna kinda do like a little breakdown um, are going to be his images from the day. I have some of my images, but they were 35 millimeter. They were all pretty badly overexposed, so I probably will not put any of them in there. Um, one thing that I learned throughout this process with E6 slide film is do not overexpose it because <laughs> it is really hard to get the detail and everything back from the negative, even you know when you're scanning it yourself. It's very hard, so don't overexpose. Um, also, don't overexpose. It's it's kind of an interesting film where you need to have your you need to have basically your film and your your shutter speed everything. You need to be right on uh, with your metering. So if you're someone like me who doesn't meter ever, um, definitely would consider using a meter for slide film or just making sure that you're being very cautious and conscious of what you're shooting and how you're shooting it. Um, with that being said, let's get into breaking down some of Josh's images. So the first image that we're going to talk about, I believe, is the first of the roll that Josh shot with my Pentax 6-7. Um, it is me putting on the putting green before we went and played golf. Uh, one thing to note, there is some light leaks in this image. Uh, not really sure exactly what caused it, but I do know that we were having a problem with my Pentax. Um, where the back door, the release at the bottom, would not stay shut, so we ended up having to electrical tape it shut before um, I could go and get it fixed, obviously, because we already had the plan to go and shoot that day. Um, but if you look at the image right now that's on your screen, Josh really nailed his, uh, really nailed his exposure, which, like I was stating earlier, is really important with uh, E6 film. 
Um, but this is a great image. Uh, I feel bad about the light leaks. I do think that the latch on the door caused them. Um, they have been fixed, but yeah, next image. The next image is, I think, in Josh's backyard, if I'm not mistaken, looking out onto the golf course. I think this may be a situation where the exposure was not 100%. Everything is well exposed, but um, the image is very blue. Now, that could also be um, due to a lot of different things. It could just be the scan. Um, it, there could be multiple things going on, but even just looking at the negative itself, it's definitely a little blue. Um, but still, you know, a nice image. The sky is rendered very nicely. I think this is the kind of scene that E6 is really good for um, because you get a lot of that detail going on in the shadows. Your highlights are right on, um, which again kind of goes back to the you really need to nail your exposure with this film. So this image here um, is going down the cart path. There was a little bit of greenery on the cart path, and I guess Josh... Uh, found that quite interesting. The shadows and stuff are really nice on this one. I think the thing that sticks out to me the most is the color of this image. Um, there's a lot of really good, vibrant greens going on in the image um, that I think are really working well and kind of lending itself to the E6. Um, the shot itself is actually really nice, really sharp image. This image right here is the only image that I shot on the roll that day. It's a image of Josh teeing off. Um, it's a little underexposed. I was shooting into the sun. Josh was using a light meter throughout the day, which I think is not necessary, but pretty, it's, it's going to help you a lot with E6 if you're really trying to nail your exposure down. Um, I typically, if you've watched my videos before, you know that I don't use a light meter. I just kind of, you know, guess, but Portrait 400 has a little bit different of a range than E6 does. So trying to pull back certain stuff in your shadows is not going to work as well with a color positive film that it will with a color negative film. The thing that's definitely left to be desired for me is the kind of movement in the golf club. I guess I wish I would have got him more in his backswing instead of his forward swing. Um, because the golf club kind of gets lost in the motion. Uh, maybe if there was a little bit more motion, maybe if I had a tripod. There's a couple of different ways that I would have liked to have done this shot, but in the time, I still think it's a good shot. Um, I just wish that I would have nailed my settings a little bit more. Now, this image is my favorite image out of the bunch, not just because it's me um, striking my Tiger Woods pose, um, but I really love the colors in this one. That vibrant orangish yellow in the background of the mulch is so nice to me. Um, I don't honestly even remember it looking like that that day, but the more that I think about it, we were playing closer to sunset, and I think that the colors are rendered really, really perfectly. Um, the image is still a little blue, and in the corners you can almost see a little bit of vignetting, um, but it's exposed perfectly, and there's really nothing wrong with this shot. I think this is a great E6 shot, um, and all over just a, a fantastic image, so kudos to Josh on this one. The shot right here is another great one. I, I think um, it's probably the best exposed shot on the roll. Um, everything is on a nice level playing field. Nothing is too bright, nothing is too dark. The shadows aren't getting lost. The highlights are not getting blown out. This one's really perfect in my opinion. Um, and yeah, I feel like it really tells the story of kind of how the day felt, what it looked like exactly outside. Because a lot of times when it comes to color negative stuff like your gold or your portra, you're not really getting exactly what the day looks like. You're getting somewhat, but it's more like, in my mind at least, a more idealized uh, version of the lighting and the space and the colors. But what I've learned with E6 is that you are really getting exactly what the scene that you're shooting looks like if you get your exposure and everything correct. And I think this is one of the best exposed images on the entire roll. Okay, so I lied earlier when I said I only took one shot on the roll. I actually took two. This one is of Josh and his now fiance and their two dogs on their back porch. Um, Josh wanted to take multiple uh, light readings uh, with his light meter. I didn't let him. Uh, looking back, wish that I would have because this shot is definitely underexposed. The highlights are somewhat good on Josh's face, but the rest of the shadows start to fall off pretty fast. Um, it seemed like another one of those shots where a tripod would have definitely came in handy or just letting Josh take an actual light reading and uh, stop being so stubborn the way that I am. But still a good shot. It's still a nice little memory, um, and I was happy that I got to take it. That kind of ends the video there, ends my rambling. What we learned during this process was that the Bellini E6 six-step kit, that's a mouthful, 
um, is actually a great kit. And it's really not as hard or as scary as you would think that it is. The preheating chemicals is definitely um, different and it's definitely kind of a little bit of a challenge. But if you've already been doing uh, your C41 process, then it's not that much different. Um, it's a very fun process. Me and Josh had a really good time doing it and it's fun to try something new. If you've never shot E6 or you shot it a long time ago and you, you weren't really happy with it or you're not super into it, definitely give it another try because I think that there's something there for everyone. Um, Josh, I've been friends with him for a while now. When I first met him, he was only a black and white photographer. He had never shot color. And if you would have told me that a few months into us being friends, I would have, you know, introduced him or talked to him about E6, I would have laughed. Um, but he's slowly falling in love with it. And I think there's something so beautiful about it. It's so different. It's not like anything else. Um, so if you haven't tried it, definitely give it a try. Um, but like I said, too, Definitely be focused on your exposures, focused on your light, because there is no latitude really with the film. What you get is what you get. Um, that's why I'm not showing my photos here, because they are so overexposed, it's it's really not even funny. There was maybe one or two out of the roll that were halfway decent, um, but you really want to be focused in on, uh, you know, on your light. With that being said, that'll be the end of the video. I swear I still have the Colorado video coming at some point in time, maybe in the near future. I've got so much film that I'm needing to get through developed. I'm starting to, to develop my own film. Um, I'm scanning all of my own stuff now, but it's just taking me super, super long to get through the process. But I promise the Colorado video is going to come soon. And with the Colorado video, there will also be a California video um, coming after that. I really wanna get better with making videos. I've been super busy recently with all of my wedding work but I want to get better with making videos because I enjoy making videos like this and I've been constantly shooting film. I just need to be better about recording the things. I've got a couple of ideas in my mind of videos that I want to shoot. I'm hoping to maybe make a video every week or every other week. I know that's kind of a lot to ask, especially when, you know, life gets hectic and you have other things going on, but that's kind of my goal right now. I want to transform this YouTube channel that I've had for however long and just try to enjoy it more and shoot more film and transport it to a more film-based YouTube channel. And the only way you can do that is obviously you know, make more videos. So if you stayed this long, I know it's like a 40 minute long video. The Colorado one's gonna be even longer, but I appreciate you. Um, you know, leave a like, subscribe, whatever, all that shit that people on YouTube say. But if you watched the video and you enjoyed it, that's all I really care about. So thanks for watching and hopefully I'm not going to, don't hold me to it, but maybe hopefully next week there will be another video or the week after next there'll be another video. Um, and I can't wait for Josh to get back from his business trip and us be able to spend a couple of days together and shoot more film and shoot a whole nother video. So thanks so much and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.